Hi, everyone. Welcome to today's live broadcast, the concept of fully automated HPTLC analysis on the example of sugars and honey. I'm Alyssa Maripoti, the custom content editor of LCGC, and I'll be your moderator for today's event. We are pleased to bring you this webcast presented by LCGC and sponsored by KMAG. I would like to share a statement from our sponsor. KMAG is the worldwide leading manufacturer and supplier of high-end instruments for high-performance thin layer chromatography, HPTLC. They support clients with analytical methods, training, technical services, and analytical consultancy. Wherever complex substance mixtures are analyzed, HPTLC often is an excellent alternative to GC and HPLC and provides complementary information. Moreover, HPTLC has proven its value as a reliable quantitative analysis technique for the quality assurance of herbal medicines and dietary supplements, food, pharmaceuticals, cosmetics, and other industrial products. Since 1958, KMAG has been dedicated to the development and manufacturing of instruments, software, and consumables of all steps of TLC and HPTLC. KMAG products are truly Swiss made and have an excellent reputation throughout the world. We have a few important announcements before we begin. This webcast is designed to be interactive and we encourage you to ask questions during the event. You can submit questions by typing them in the Q&A box, which is found on the right-hand side of your screen. You can enlarge the slide window by clicking on the small square icon in the upper right-hand corner of the slide window, or by hovering your mouse over the lower right-hand corner and dragging the window to the desired side. The slides will also advance automatically during the event. If you have any technical problems viewing or hearing the presentation, just click on the question mark help widget in the dock at the bottom of your presentation window. I would now like to introduce today's speakers. We are pleased to be joined today by Dr. Melanie Brozat, Dr. Stefan Gogler, and Nicholas Richard. Dr. Brozat has been the Scientific Business Development Manager at KMAG since 2014. She studied processing engineering in Offenburg, Germany, and obtained her PhD from the Faculty of Biology at the Albert Ludwigs University in Freiburg, Germany. Dr. Gogler uh, heads up the sales and marketing department at KMAG, he holds a PhD in analytical chemistry from the University of Zaragoza, Spain. At KMAG, he coordinated the dry blood spot department for six years before taking the position as global sales manager. Nicholas has been the head of research and development at KMAG since 2015. He holds master's degrees in computer science and business administration. His main tasks include evaluation of new technologies, project and IP management, as well as collaboration with external partners. Thank you each for joining us today. Please get us started. Welcome to the Comoc HPTLC Laboratory. I'm so glad you could join us today. I'm Stefan, Comoc's Head of Sales and Marketing, and I will be your moderator today. So recently, a lot has been going on in the world of high-performance thin-layer chromatography which we call HPTLC. We are entering a new area with the launch of HPTLC Pro. We introduce fully automated application development and autonomous plate handling. The power of the new system is demonstrated on the example of honey from the field of sugar and polysaccharide analysis. The advantage for honey analysis is the combination of several analytical questions that can be answered with just one instrumental setup. HPTLC allows identifying the honey and its origin, quantifying its sugars and detecting certain types of bioactivity directly on the plate. For those of you who are new to this technology, HPTLC allows to separate any matrix with a minimal sample preparation. The separation is performed on a glass plate covered with a stationary phase, such as silica gel, and a liquid mobile phase. The separated substances are visible on the plate and can be direct detected by derivatization with chemical reagents or by scanning densitometry. Until now, HPTLC included several manual steps and could be influenced by environmental changes. So the overall demand for automated solutions to handle complex matrices, such as natural products, is on the rise. 
Automated solutions should focus on three key attributes. So first, they must be easy to use from the initial setup to the daily use. Second, they must allow for high throughput sample analysis with a robust and reliable hardware setup. And third, they must be standardized and must allow to create databases for cluster analysis and the use of smart algorithms. So we applied these principles when we created HPTLC Pro. The HPTLC Pro system is a breakthrough technology that combines up-to-date sample application, development, automated feeding of the system with clean plates and storage. We will soon launch more modules of this automated system, which will be detection, derivatization and mass spectrometry coupling. So just in the next steps after fine tuning them. I'm excited to show you this concept on the latest developments in sugar analysis of honey and other food samples. But first I ask Nicolas to tell you just a little bit of the story on how we got there. Hi, I'm Nicolas, Kamak's Head of Research and Development. Kamak has been the world leader in planar chromatography for decades already. We supply the world with high-tech equipment for the analysis of complex matrices, such as botanicals and natural products. To lead the HPTLC technology into the next dimension within the context of Industry 4.0, we partnered up with the Institute for Lab Automation and Mechatronics at the University of Applied Science in Rapperswil near Zurich. Together with our innovative and experienced internal development team, we designed a fully automated modular system for HPTLC. The HPTLC plates are transported autonomously on a conveyor between the modules. Each process step is automated within the modules and up to five plates can be stored in the module plate storage. We designed each module from scratch, putting together over 60 years of experience in HPTLC with the latest technological possibilities. Like this, we achieved to design and produce a high-end analysis platform for the fully automated and standardized process of up to 75 samples per run at the highest level of accuracy and precision. Welcome to the next dimension of HPTLC. Great analytical instrumentation is the foundation for developing cutting-edge methods and efficient laboratory workflows. We at Comac are looking into the complete workflow, drawing the samples in the field, developing the HPTLC method, performing the sample analysis and visualizing and evaluating the results. Here we took honey as an example to represent the analysis of sugars and polysaccharides in food, fermentation processes, to production of biofuels and other areas. As this includes a wide range of saccharides, we wanted to make the analytical process as reliable as possible. And here's Melanie to give you more insights to our new analytical methods. Hi, my name is Melanie and I'm the Scientific Business Development Manager at Carmack. My job is trying to understand the different needs of HPTLC users worldwide in various application fields from a scientific point of view. This is important for the development of methods for our existing HPTLC instruments and the new HPTLC Pro system. Recently, a research team from Australia published several articles on the analysis of honey by HPTLC. And when we talk about honey, we talk about a natural product that is derived from nectar collected by honeybees from a range of floral sources. It consists to about 70% of sugars, followed by residual moisture and a small proportion of other compounds such as phenolics and flavonoids. Especially Manuka honey from Australia and New Zealand is sold at high prices as Manuka honey has anti-inflammatory and antibacterial properties. Adulteration has been observed here where shady manufacturers add cheap sugar syrup to the honey to improve profits. So let's first have a look at the sugars in honey. The quantification of sugars can be challenging. 
as sugars have a high polarity and most of them lack a sizable chromophore for UV vis detection. The method from the publication was developed on CARMAX HPTLC instruments. And today I would like to show you this method and how we successfully transferred it to the new HPTLC Pro system. When I saw the Australian publication the first time, I was immediately impressed by the great separation of the relevant sugars in honey, which are fructose, maltose, sucrose and glucose. It is easy to perform and offers a convenient approach to quantify the major sugars and in addition to identify potential adulteration with sugar syrups. In 2011, German scientists published a paper on sugar analysis that compares LCE LSD with HPTLC UV detection. Their developing solvent contains boric acid, which is a real game changer in the separation of small carbohydrates like fructose. Without it, fructose and glucose are difficult to separate in normal phase chromatography. The Australians modified this developing solvent and improved the chromatography by developing the HPTLC plate under standardized conditions. The method is fit for purpose for quantification of the four relevant sugars in honey, but the use of HPTLC instruments requires manual intervention by well-trained staff as well as patients due to the required time for chromatography. The total runtime for plate is about 3.7 hours. In routine quality control, more automation and short analysis time are important. Therefore, the HPTLC method was transferred to the new HPTLC Pro system. The time-consuming chamber saturation for 60 minutes is not required at all with the new developing chamber. A short 90-second reconditioning of the plate via the circulating gas space is enough. Furthermore, the developing distance could be reduced to 70 mm instead of previous 85 mm to speed up the development. The velocity of any developing solvent used in HPTLC decreases over the developing distance, which drastically increases the developing time if the developing distance is longer than 70 mm. So, the finally transferred method requires just 2.5 hours for application and development, which is a time reduction of one third. This is still untypically long for developments in HPTLC due to the viscosity of the developing solvent used. An alternative solvent system containing boric acid 2 was developed in parallel. The four relevant sugars migrate further with this solvent system, but other carbohydrates of different sizes can be analyzed as well. The time required in this case is about 1.3 hours. Compared to the original method, this is a time reduction of two-thirds. Up to 20 sample tracks can be applied onto one plate, which gives a runtime per sample of less than 4 minutes. And this is not the end of the story. The new method uses a simple isocratic development after plate activation by molecular sieve. Together with the module blade storage and the soft provision cats, five analyses can be programmed as a sequence. The sequence allows an overlapping processing of the blades. While the first blade is applied and is moving to the development step, the second blade enters the system and is applied while the first one is developed. Start the sequence whenever you want, for example during the night, and get back to the lab ready to further process the five developed plates. When plates are processed in sequence, the total runtime of five plates is further reduced. For 100 sample tracks on five plates, we get a runtime of about two minutes per sample. This method can also be adapted for other fields, such as bioethanol fermentation and others. Pretty straightforward, I'd say. So what's next? The analysis of sugars is just one topic for honey, and yes, it can be done by other techniques as well, but HPTLC can do more, such as HPTLC can deal with sticky matrices due to the one-time usage of the plate, it is very robust and usually a minimal sample preparation is needed. HPTLC can 
sensitively detect chromophore lacking analytes after universal or selective derivatization. Then HPTLC is rapid due to parallel analysis of many samples and minimal sample prep. The running costs are low because less than 5 ml of solvent per sample are required for the analysis of sugars in honey, for example. And HPTLC can be used flexibly. With the same equipment, we can also analyze the floral fingerprint. Is it Manuka honey or something else? We can analyze antioxidants in honey and we can analyze HMF, a compound formed when bees are fed with sugar. So if you are targeting the analysis of honey for quality and regulatory purposes, or if you want to confirm the quality of raw materials, you can directly use existing HPTLC methods provided by us or the HPTLC community. HPTLC is also a useful tool to follow supply chains by using its visual fingerprint. And together with our HPTLC laboratory at Carmack, we can help you to transfer your TLC or HPTLC methods to the new HPTLC Pro system. Thank you, Melanie, for this detailed description of your method. Great job. So I conclude. We can answer several analytical questions with only one instrumental setup. This includes the origin of the honey based on its HPTLC fingerprint, the identification and quantification of the sugars in honey, and the biological activity in terms of antioxidants of the individual components. So this makes instruments, or this makes other instruments and their maintenance for the given task obsolete. The sample preparation for HPTLC is quick and simple. Because the stationary phase, the HPTLC plate, is a consumable. Almost any matrix can be directly applied onto the plate, which reduces time, consumables, and the overall cost for sample preparation. Through automation, we can analyze large sample batches in a standardized manner following good laboratory practice guidelines, so GIP. The results are easy to understand through the visual fingerprints plus the according quantification profiles. With the new method, the sample runtime was reduced by factor 5 when using the sequence mode on the HPTLC Pro compared to the initial method. So if you want to receive further information about our advanced method of sugar or honey or any other information, please feel free to contact us through our webpage or give us a call. At Kamak, we put the HPTLC user experience at the center of what we do. It means so much to make a difference in people's laboratory experience. So the future of HPTLC will be automated, simpler and more enjoyable. Okay, so now we talked enough and we're happy to receive your input and questions. All right, thank you guys for such an informative presentation. Uh, before we get started on the question and answer session, I just want to remind our audience um, how to submit them. You can submit questions by typing them in the Q&A box that's found on the right-hand side of the presentation window. Uh, our first question today is, what is the preparation time for to get the system running? So, hello, everyone. Um, this depends on the method and the number of samples and plates, let, plates let's say. Excluding the sample preparation, the reagents have to be filled into the solvent bottles. The plates have to be loaded to the plate storage, and the rack has to be loaded with the wild. If there is a change of solvent, a priming and cleaning step is performed. So the analysis files in VisionCAT are based on a method template. And the only thing then is to enter here the information for the track assignment table. The preparation time is variable, but usually less than half an hour, I would assume. Okay, and where will my sample information be saved and stored? Um, so this is altogether um, con yeah, done by the VisionCAT software. The VisionCAT software is controlling the instrument and is used for data treatment and storage. 
the software uses a client server based technology and the server harbors the SQL database. Thank you. Okay, and what is the cost per sample? Um, yeah, difficult to answer, but I can give you an idea about the cost um, that we have in Switzerland. So one HPTLC blade costs about 10 Swiss francs. And with, let's say, about 5 ml of solvent consumption for the analysis and about 5 ml for dissolving the sample, the running costs are per sample below one Swiss franc usually. Um, and how can I transfer this method to other sugar-containing matrices from food? Um, that's a very good question. First of all, I would have a look into the literature. The sample preparation for different sugar-containing matrices is, for example, men mentioned in the publications of Gerda Morlock, a researcher from Germany. Then I would run standards with the developing solvent of the new method. If the standards are in a suitable RF range and well separated, different concentrations of standards can be applied to determine, to determine the working range. If not, the developing solvent might have to be modified. And then after determination of the working range, I would run selected samples with and without spiking. So I hope this answers the question. Um, okay, and what is the basic solvent system in Spain reagents for analysis of sugar and honey? Um, so we have like two, I uh, know there are several solvent systems for sugars. But the two that you have seen here, the initial method uses isobutanol, uh, sorry, isopropanol and butanol and boric acid. And this is very well separating the smaller sugar, the smaller sugars like fructose and um, glucose. And the other solvent system, this uses acyl acetate and then also boric acid. And if you are interested in the instrumental details, in the method details, then you can download soon the application note from the Karmac website. Okay, and with this method uh, slash mobile phase, can you separate oligosaccharides, sorry, I can't say that word very well, higher than maltose? If oligosaccharides have different linkages, are you still expecting some separation? Yeah, so this new alternative solvent system with the acyl acetate and boric acid, this can also um, separate larger oligosaccharides. So then it's also separating um, yeah, up to DP7 glucose units. And does your automated system allow for dipping in derivatization reagents or only spraying? Sorry, can you please repeat the question? Sure. Does your automated system allow for dipping in derivatization reagents or only spraying? Ah, yes. <laughs> so <laughs> that was one of the technical issues to solve before we could really um, automate the entire HPTLC process. The HPTLC Pro system has for derivatization the spraying technique that allows to give the um, automation for the derivatization process. The immersion is not supported and this is also not recommended in an automated process. With the derivatization uh, technique that we use, the micro droplet spraying, we just need 3 ml of reagent, which is homogeneously distributed and then the nozzle is cleaned and you have each time then fresh reagent. For immersion, for dipping, you use usually a tank that requires large volume, and each time you immerse, you will have a change in the concentration. So that's why we have decided for the most sophisticated, also for quantification. And can you use this method for quantitative, quantitative analysis of each sugar? Um, this is cannot be answered in general. So depending on 
your analytical goal or on your samples you're going to analyze. Um, there might be sometimes sugars also co eluting So this has to be answered or we have to have a look at it for the specific sample. For the sugars in honey, yes. So the major sugars, they can all be quantified precisely. Okay, and how is quantitation actually performed? So for the quantitation, we usually run on each plate external standards. And we have then of the standards, or of mixtures of the standards, those at different concentration levels. And then apply of each standard or standard mixture the same um, vol uh, volume, which is recommended that we have then also the same behavior of the applied sample and standard inside of the stationary phase. So we recommend to use individual standards used at different concentration levels. And then we apply, let's say, five different levels of the standard, generate the calibration curve, and then via the calibration curve, we can quantify the amount of target analyte in our sample. Okay, we have time for a couple more questions. Um, can you identify mixtures of multiple botanicals? Yes. Um, but also here, um, we have to look for each case. I don't like if we general, generalize things. That's also something that we have to look for. The mixtures, is the mixture um, are there specific zones that are unique for each compound or for each matrix that is going inside this mixture? So let's say we have a polyherbal mixture of four different plant views, or four different herbal plants. Then each plant has to have some unique zones inside of the mixture that we can clearly then also quantify for each one how much went into it. And this is a very interesting topic that we are also working on at the moment. And there are some examples where it works already quite good. Okay, our last question uh, for the day will be, can you name the best uh, derivatization reagent for detecting sugars in samples? Yes, so the best, the most sensitive and up to now, which I know, is the aniline diphenylamine phosphoric acid reagent. There we can detect after derivatization with a scanning densitometry at 370 nanometer and go down to the lower nanogram range. Okay, great. Thank you for answering all those questions. Uh, we are out of time. I want to thank our audience for attending and participating in today's event. I'd also like to thank our sponsor, KMAG, for uh, making today's educational webcast possible. We would like to ask everyone in the audience to participate in a, um, uh, just in a brief uh, survey from our sponsor. You can find it on the right-hand side of your screen. You will also receive an email alerting you when this webcast will be available for replay. And we do invite you to forward that announcement to your colleagues who may have missed today's live event. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. We will see you next time. Goodbye.